Maybe I'm more creative than I thought, and maybe I don't. This I want to tell just business to business, and I think at the end I was a bit gutted that that was the business I was going in with. But couldn't you have changed there, it in those two days they gave you? Well, to be honest, I obviously fell down writing my business plan in the first place, so rewriting a whole one, and I didn't want to just come up with a random idea, so. I will, though, and I have, so it'll be fine. <laughs> yes. Does it involve chocolate? Yeah. Well, actually, I, it could involve drunk jellies, I don't know. Obviously. <laughs> I yeah. love them. That was yeah. quite the invention. They came across great. Well, no, I think it. I was trending worldwide on, on Twitter for those, so... For, so do you think there's a global desire for drunk jellies at some stage? I reckon there might be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I think an adult sweet shop yeah. is a good idea. No, that makes it sound like just, you know, chocolate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The last thing, no, no chocolate shaped willies, lots no. of different flavours. But the, the alcohol, the boozy jellies, and that sort of because I think there is a market for another more grown up sweet shop. Were you disappointed as well? Oh, I was so disappointed. I was really rooting for you. I loved you on the show. Thank and you. then at the end, I just sat there waiting to hear your idea. You were like, idea. what is she doing? No, it was, and I really I felt really like deflated for mm. you. It was just such a shame, really. It was tough, and these boys that I was up against are. Amazing, and I was sat there literally listening to them in awe of what they had done. And they really had these businesses that they'd been working in, they wanted to do this particular business. Whereas I had thought, right, what can I make money from? What's my opportunity? And it was just the wrong thing, really. It's a slightly heartless business, as well, isn't it? The call center thing. It's a bit like saying, I want to open a massive battery farm chicken thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I think I've learned through what people say is you've got to go into something that you love and obviously money is part of it but I am creative and I love people and I think it's just changed my view of what I want to do really so if anything it's oh, really yeah oh so those 12 weeks have just shifted in slightly in, in your ambitions have they? Mm, yeah maybe thinking well actually if whatever business I do needs to be something I love with a passion not just because of the money that it's going to give me yeah so, yeah, it, it really did help me. This, this, is this the best order to have it in? I think passion is the, the missing ingredient. I think you are a natural-born retailer, and I think if you take hold of something, you know, you've got to get your strategy right. I haven't heard that word oh, from you tonight. I love that word. Um, yeah, we all do. This and um, <laughs> anyway, but I think you, I think you have great potential to do something in the retail um, world. OK, uh, because you started right from the very off. Like, like Nick, you made an impression in week one. But this time, it was with your creativity. If we are to win, I think design is almost the most important element in the, in the whole process. This is of paramount importance. <laughs> your team on design was who, basically? Um, Jade. Yeah. That's very good. It's very good. If you have a fabric pen, you can actually go and colour it in themselves. Really? I'll, I'll, I'll find out about that in a minute. It's good. <laughs> they were good. They were really, really nice. Oh, they, I mean, this is, me. That's oh, yeah. Well, you can, you can have it. Uh, <laughs> the, but that's oh, the uh, yeah. They, they were the, there's a bigger one because they had them on the jigsaw here. Now that we have the artist here, the creator. Uh, what are any of them really? Uh, is, the question. <laughs> is that a bee? Right. Uh, and that's well, it. no, that was meant to be a tiger, obviously a lion, and this was a nun. The really unhappy. Uh, <laughs> nun dressed with a with a beak on. The, uh, but that's what it was. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But the thing is, were you not furious to be beaten by this by this piece of tact? Did that like really <laughs> irritate you? Um, well, I think this just showed that actually creativity, creativity can't win. You have to have some strategy or you have to have a different plan. So I think that's where my learning curve came from. Let's have a, talk, a word with Karen Brady now. Uh, Karen, good to see you here. Uh, what have been your impressions of Jade throughout this process? The thing about Jade that I love is she's very direct, incredibly creative. I really admired her tolerance, particularly of Adam, I have to say, at times. <laughs> um, and I, I think you're very likeable, Jade, and I really wish you well in the future. Good. Now, um, let's just get to this, will we? Uh, because you got on well with most of your colleagues, but there was one person with whom you've had, shall we say, a more challenging journey. It's, it's no secret that me and Jade have had a very stormy, fine relationship. It's like we're an annoying brother and sister yeah. act, isn't it? Big happy smiles, fun faces. You just shout in random orders. No more talking. Shouts a lot, posse. No manners. Okay, 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 if you prefer it like that, fine. To be honest, he's just irritated me and I can't wait to get home. God only knows what she's doing here. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Jay. 
if things don't work out for you, JD, come and work for me after your performance today, yeah? <laughs> me and JD put our differences behind us. I don't mind working with her. We've had our disagreements in the past, but I think we've earned a mutual respect today. JD and I have to work with her. JD's approved what she does, what she says she's done. You don't even know what I do. Bad manners, ignorance. Actually, I'm a successful businesswoman. I don't think we'll be going on a date anytime soon, put it out there. <laughs> from Adam about this last week. Anything you want to add to this? I think everyone that came into this process has done amazingly to get there and I think in life you meet people that you don't want to work with and you don't want to be your best friend. But I don't have anything bad to say about him because I think he's done really well and if I needed someone to tell something, he'd be the man. Very good. Thank you, Jade. Very good. <laughs> Get the drinks in, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it a free bar? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I actually think you could have your own reality TV oh, show. Okay. <laughs> you like Amazing. the chuckle brothers. Yeah, we just send you a, yeah, to me, to you. Uh, <laughs> to you going over with a ladder, driving out from town to town. Like the, uh, the, uh, it's important to get on with people and pick people you actually get on with. Yeah, I think when you're a small team with a, with a small business, you do need to um, get on with people. But I am a character that either people love or they don't. So I end up often being um, taken out of meetings. I remember once in a board meeting, and every time somebody said something, I interrupted. So my husband, who is the managing director, picked me up out of my seat and threw me out, oh. which, was, which was charming. <laughs> um, Your husband My went, husband picked went. me up and threw oh. me out of a meeting. She's on one of her team so here. I'm... I'll get rid of her. I'll get like that. <laughs> how, how did that look? That was looked awful. Well, it looked awful. I went home, packed his bag and threw him out. But I <laughs> But it is important to get on with, and you're right, you know what, you're not going to get on with everybody, that's not real life, but the fact that you can still work together is, you know, is an important thing. Uh, Jenny, have you ever clashed with Well, the I work mostly by myself and I get on my own tits, so... <laughs> <laughs> so usually halfway through the afternoon I am so bored of me, so... <laughs> I really, uh, I admire the way that all of you work so well together, I think you did a great job. Now, we do think, when we were telling you what to give you, we did, this did stand out. Right? <laughs> so our gift is inspired by your love of chocolate and of liquor. Please welcome JJ from the London Cocktail Club, who has created your very own Jade Sweet Thing yeah. cocktail. Oh, I love it. Oh, thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a bit now? Oh, yeah, try it. Tell me how it is. Like, yeah. Mmm, that is lush. Is it nice? Is it is good? Bit? Yeah, go on, what the hell? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, no, keep it up down the, the centre of the table. Uh, <laughs> disappear in a second. And actually, just so you can recreate it, here it is. Actually, this is it. It genuinely is. This is the re recipe for Jade Sweet Thing Cocktail. Oh, I love uh, it. That is it. Thank you. Yeah, that was so good. Listen, that's your yeah. Very good. Yeah. Jade, you are the last woman left standing. Here are your highlights. I am, I am. You see what you see, and that's me straight away. Hi. And action, guys! Action! Hold on, it's on fire. <laughs> She's bubbly. Really, really bubbly. I have got quite a big personality. Bombarded by visual stimulation. Everything is half price! Spicy nicey. I am what I am. Jade, Jade, Jade. You don't see Jade in a bad mood. <laughs> She's loud, she's boisterous, but yeah, she's a good girl. Pretty loud and full of life, but mm, I get the job done. The Phoenix win by over £8,000. I really love winning. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jade Nash. Our runner-up tonight has had an incredible journey to the final, but in the end, the prize was not to be his. You're both credible people to invest the money in. But I've got to make a decision. And so, Ricky, you're hired. Thanks, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the runner-up in The Apprentice 2012, Tom Gearing. <laughs> Thank you.
you must be gutted not to have done that, to have won. Yeah, really disappointing. I mean, to get to the, the final stage is just so crushing when you find out you haven't won. But, I mean, the first thing I want to say is, obviously, be up against Ricky was... He's such a credible candidate and he was such a strong contestant. And I'm just... If I was going to lose to anyone, I'm happy it's Ricky because, you know, he did really well. And you were, like, you were one of the outstanding candidates. You won seven of the tasks. Did you at any stage think, I've got this, I have this, this is mine? Yeah, I thought I had a good chance. And, yeah, obviously, when you're doing well and you're winning as project manager, you think that, you know, you're, you're in a good place. OK, well, let's have a look at some of the highs and the lows of the interviews. Essentially, the idea is to invest in classic wines while they're still in the barrel and then watch their price rocket. I've written lots of business plans. I've never written anything as sophisticated as really? this. How much of your business plan did your father write? Uh, he didn't write any of it. None of it at all? No. Any qualifications? I don't have any qualifications. What experience have you got? No Zero. experience in hedge funds. The plan sounds like a, a pretty big risk for me. £25 million? Pounds. That's a fortune. How'd it go? It's stressful. Tom's business, without doubt, Alan, you're quite right, is a risky business. I think his business would be electric. Fast moving, tremendous returns to be made. Mm. Tom, do you think you're a bit of a risk taker? I wouldn't have come here making big claims if I didn't think I'd be able to fulfil them. I wouldn't have come here unless I had confidence in my inability to raise the funds. I've proven I can be successful, it can be profitable. Were you too ambitious at aiming for 25 million? Um, I don't think so, because the, the whole concept and the whole idea needs to be that much. It needs to have that much capital going into it. Uh, and then with the fine wine market, you need to have leverage. So unless you've got that amount of money going into it, you're not going to have leverage for the fund. So that idea might have been a bit too optimistic, but for that idea to work, it had to you be that need much. need to have yeah, that much exactly. money as well. the, uh, I mean, that enthusiasm is fantastic, that drive, mm. but, you know, there's going to be a couple of knockbacks. Well... I think there's a lot of enthusiastic, clever people out there with great ideas, but it takes that extra chapter in somebody. Don't, I wouldn't worry that you, that you haven't had experience in hedge funding, um, but I think you need somebody who has yeah. so that you can learn. Because if you are, especially at this moment in time, if you are dealing with other people's money and it goes wrong, Tom, yeah. it's going to be curtains, yeah. isn't it? And you'll end up modelling for some gorgeous menswear. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't think would be a bad thing. It's nice to have that to fall back yeah. on, isn't it? But, like a tree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I think your passion and your knowledge of your product is going to be vital. And when you go to however many of those people yeah. to raise that 25 million, I, re I think you really need to start to show your personality and who you are. Because I, I never really got who you really were. In the, in the task where you were the, um, the head of the, of the group for the wine project, yeah. I thought he's really going to come through here. Yeah. And um, I still didn't see you. I mean, I'd have had a nice day out. Though. It was yeah. a good fun, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Clearly. It's important to A very good day yeah. out. Yeah. Especially so many weeks into the process, you've got to let your hair down at some point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On a task. Yeah. Yeah. Did you find it irritating that you were asked if your dad had written the, uh, the business plan? Yeah, it was, it was a little bit annoying, but um, I think he was a little bit more embarrassed than I was, obviously, um, you know, watching it back. But, you know, it's great having him on board with, with obviously, the company and being able to set up a company that do so well that... You know, after a couple of years, my dad turns around and says, oh, I want to come and join your company. And that's fantastic to be able to do. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy that he got some praise as well. <laughs> <laughs> How fantastic to be able to employ your dad. Are you really horrible to him? Do you make him do <laughs> all the really. overtime? <laughs> um, I think you're incredibly glamorous. I think you're something out of F. Scott Fitzgerald. There's something of the great Gatsby about you. Um, I don't well, think you need to That's going to end well, uh, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> <I know. laughs> the only thing that bothers me is that I don't think you should get too fond of your stock. Uh, I think it's a dangerous business to be in, having yeah. loads and loads of wine. Well, we know what happens when <laughs> let loose on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk to me still, with... Sorry. sorry. I was going to say, you're still going to stick to your original plan and do set out to do what you want to do? Yeah, definitely, yeah. That's something I'm going to be looking to do anyway. Um, shame I can't be doing it with, obviously, Lord Sugar, but, no. you know, I'll hopefully there'll be someone else out there who's interested in, in taking up the opportunity. Talk to me about starting a business up. When you started, what, what age were you when you started? Up the business? I was 16 when I first started, with no qualifications, no money, just a dream in my head, and I made every mistake in the book and um, now I've done it started all over again and have made every mistake in the book <laughs> so it, it you know just just because of age or or experience you still need to make mistakes and I always think that failure is the doorstep to success and when you've learned to fail and you've dusted yourself down and I think you I think you're absolutely I do not think you're going to go into the same business that you think sitting here right now I think something amazing is going to open up for you and you will see it and for goodness sake take hold of that baton and run because because that's the secret of an entrepreneur they take the moment and they run with that baton <laughs>